I'm good. Hello and welcome to my EPQ and it's on. Should modern civilization slash governments contact uncontacted peoples? Um, so for my introductions, I want to show you the aims and the conclusions of my EPQ. So I want to look into the problem of uncontacted peoples and give a conclusion in my EPQ as for what to do in the future, so that we know what to do with these uncontacted tribes and uh, natives. Um, I chose the CPQ as I always found the idea of pockets of civilizations that haven't been touched by modern civilization really interesting, because uh, they are a time capsule to a time that we have lost. And um, I think that it's also interesting because there is no active solution currently. I mean, there are different governments that are all providing a different type of solution around the world, but currently there is no universal solution. And I wanted to see if I could personally try and help find one. Of course, my, it wasn't going to be certain what I produced, but it was in my opinion. So. I drew the conclusion that there were two main groups of non-contacted non peoples, and that there were two different solutions for each of these groups. Those who are relatively isolated, out of the way from the rest of the modern world, and those who were solely stuck in the middle of, the, uh, of a thriving area, such as those in Brazil would have to be contacted for their own safety due to poachers and other groups of uh, humans who weren't acting on behalf of the government, whilst those who were acting on behalf of the government wouldn't have to go to an uh, island like North Sentinel to um, protect it, because um, there's no reason for us to make contact with them, as there is no one going to those islands except for very fringe cases. In the presentation, this presentation, I'll try and explain my troubles as well with writing it, but also my strengths and the way that I wrote it. So, next slide, please. So this is the aim of my project. I wanted to make sure that my conclusion was as well thought out as possible and had as much information to back it as possible as well. So I embarked on writing a very long and comprehensive literature review, which would give me the information to write my discussion. I wanted to hit three main points in my literature review. The history of the islands and those people, and I also wanted to look at case studies. So these were very closely linked. So this is the history of these islands, the history of native peoples who have been uncontacted, and also the case studies. So in, this, um, in geography, we have to look at case studies. So I thought I'd do something similar here, where I looked at several tribes, and I'd use them to um, try and show what happened in previous scenarios. But also another major part was looking at the medical side of it, with vaccinations, which would prove or not it was even safe for us to contact these people because there were massive depopulations during colonial eras where there was massive amounts of expansion. So do we have any questions about what I said there? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I think that the most important section was looking at the situation of past events as it's easiest to tell what will happen in the future by looking at the past and using that to represent what we need to do in the future to make a better success. So that's what the aims were. So can you see these two maps? Yeah. yeah. So, what can you observe here about this map from the early 1800s and 2004? Before it was a penal colony, and after it was a penal colony, and it broke off from the British Empire. Uh, what does the white thing So the white shows uncolonised uh, areas where the indigenous populations no longer exist. So in the 1800s, you can see the entire island chain was native ground. But by the late, by the 2004, um, they have been reduced to just these areas here that you can see coloured. Mm -hmm. So, well, what, what do you think happened there? I mean, uh, less people. Less people, yeah, but do you, uh, considering it was a pre British colony pre-establishment in, in the 1800s, uh, do you think that they had major parts had to play? Because this is a contact of people with uncontented people, and this is a previous example. So looking at history, we can understand the past. And exactly the same thing you can see here in America. This entire area, this continent-sized country, used to be ruled by Native Americans. Mm -hmm. But with the advent of Europeans and making contact without safe precautions, like we need to show in the modern day to keep these groups safe, they were wiped out off the map through diseases and conquests. And now, Native people only exist in these tiny areas. So I hope that makes sense to you. Yeah, and that's yeah. why this is a prevalent issue. So um, thank you. If you had any questions about that. No. Okay. You, well, you explained it so well. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, so for my research methodology whilst looking into my literature review, less so with my discussion because the literature review is the, um, the looking into the topic, um, I thought that it was important first off to get only people that I trusted 
and who had the credibility uh, to prove themselves. Um, so that uh, anything I made clarifications or, it, or I wrote about in my discussion, I would know would be factually correct. Now, would every single thing be 100% researched properly from these people? No, but it would be as high as I could get it on a, on a range of um, uh, you know, safety that I know, knew that it would be well represented. And if they were opinionated, that would be bad because obviously it would be terrible for the EPQ. So if they were opinionated, I would make it very explicitly clear in my literature review that they were opinionated. Um, but for uh, news sources such as the BBC, which I used a lot, um, I use them because BBC is meant to be um, you know, unbiased. Yes. Well, would it be bad if you used an opinionated source? Well, an opinionated source, uh, it could have... So if I were to look at a Brazilian document from the Brazilian government, well, which is very far right wing, and wants to take down these native tribes, it would mean that um, they would... Uh, it would be biased towards the destruction of the tribes and the destruction of the jungle that they live in. Because if I use that as categorical evidence, then that wouldn't be fair, would it? Because it would just mean that, um, you know, the natives were getting uh, ripped off a bit by these. Uh, and if I was to present it as facts, even though it's clearly biased, it wouldn't be fair. You understand? Um, in my research, I spent a long time looking at different case studies, as I explained before. And some of these were the Jawas and the North Sentinelese, but also tribes in uh, Brazil, in the Amazon. Uh, next page, please. The strengths of my EPQ. I think that all the points I may make are coherent in sense due to the amount of research I did in my extensive literature review, and that the way that I organised my EPQ was an effective way of presenting my arguments with you know, a logical conclusion and also the presenting of data, figures, and the way that I did it was coherent and logical. I also think that my peer checking I had throughout, as well as checking it myself, I had some other people check it um, for spelling and grammar, not the actual content of the EPQ, but that really helped me pick up on any um, things that didn't make any sense. Um, so other people did read it and other people could um, not give me opinions about the topic, but tell me whether or not I've misread it or something. Another strength was the variety of sources I used in my literature review, as I was talking about before. But I think that was really useful for me because it allowed me to really show what I was um, what I was trying to write about, and it allowed me to um, it allowed me to have further clarity in my discussion because I had more of an extensive, wider knowledge on many different types of tribes rather than just one specific. So that's why using a variety of sources and case studies would have been better than just using one. So if I only looked at the North Sentinelese, it would have just been, oh, yeah, so we just keep them on an island. But it's not just islands. So looking at different types of sources, looking at different types of tribes, and not just being anchored down to one was a very good thing for me, I think. And also my resources, as I was saying before, the BBC and whatnot. The limitations I face. I am an avid procrastinator, if you didn't know, but you couldn't realise. And I spend a long time writing my pages, and I do them in short bursts. So this causes me to sometimes forget what I'm going to write. <laughs> this sort of work ethic was fine whilst working on my literature review, as I could do them in smaller segments alone. But as soon as I got to the discussion, it led to confused points, and me having to go over it in retrospect, only adding to the time I had to spend on my project. So it, it didn't help me in the long term, and it only made it just a lot more time consuming and boring and it uh, led me to further desensitise from doing it and always led to more procrastination, so... Um, decisive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I did, didn't give any more explanation for that. That's, that's, that's all you gave. Another limitation was the fact that it was very undecisive. Uh, I was very undecided, leaving me not to be able to come back to my decision on why I wanted to do shortening my time to working to work leaving me behind. So I was not really very decisive of what I wanted to do in my EPQ, what I wanted to write about, and um, what I wanted overall to say. Next slide, please. Uh, what I would have what I would have done differently. For one, I would have tried to leave less time in between the sessions of my EPQ, as I was saying before, in my floors. Um, and I, that would have just caused me to be able to do it in a much shorter time 
in a more cohesive time and to not fall behind uh, personal deadlines I had set for myself in my Gantt chart and other sets of um, ideas. Another thing I would have done differently is paid more attention to these things, so the what I just said there, um, and I would have paid more attention to these because it meant that, one, I didn't have Mr. Thistle moving down my neck, and also I wouldn't have been falling behind myself. But I have gotten it done, but it would have been easier and less stressful and caused less pain in the short term. Yes, sir? Why did you uh, forget to do some uh, parts of the APQ project? Are oh, you talking about this final point there? No, the second one. Oh, yes. Um, so I, um, I just sometimes forgot. I'm, I'm a forgetful person, naturally. So the fact that I forgot parts of my APQ just led me to... Um, combined with my procrastination just led to, for large gaps to be left in, continually updated things, things I couldn't do in short bursts in my own time. So my Gantt chart and my um, activity log, I should have spent more time focusing on them rather than anything else. Um, okay, um, I think that's all I want to say about these. I, I, did a, I would do many different things. All right. Implications for the future. Well, very obviously, this will help me in university to write and present my essay work to people, as I'm going to do essay type based subjects. But um, that way, uh, if I do do it in the future, I will know better what to write. And for the past um, slide, where I was talking about implication, or the um, what I would have done differently, that would have meant that I'd be able to um, do this more effectively and to show my entire EBQ to a person with less knowledge on the situation, and it would have been a lot easier for myself in the short term. Um, but also, a lot less noticeable thing that it helped me with was my cohesive thinking about situations and um, to be more critical towards things, rather than just accepting the narrative that is presented and to look into things and to try and research things for myself, as I all too often just believe the first thing that was said to me before this, it's led me to show that it's actually quite easy to do some research about a topic and a situation. So it's only helped me uh, to become less blindly submissive to just what somebody's told me, and to do research for myself and to form my own opinions and my own conclusions about a topic. Anyway, one more slide. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I think overall that my EPQ went very well. Uh, there would be changes, but of course there were strengths as well. Um, any questions?